Good everyone, I'm going to this video. Today we have a review on the TU2S44, the, well, recently down-tiered Russian 5.7 medium bomber. Now, obviously you can see down there I've put down all the three TU2s that are currently in the game. Well, there is a fourth, but that that is apparently some sort of extremely rare vehicle. And they're about as rare as rocking horse shit, so I'm not including that one, technically speaking. So, obviously, the TU-2S, the regular one, has recently gone into 5.3, and these two, the 44 and the 59, have gone down to 5.7. And I've been waiting for this change for quite some time. The 44 and the 59 don't really change much from the original TU-2S. The 59 has the most changes, but the 44 only changes one thing, and that only really affects it minorly. So, the TU-2S44, obviously, I have spaded the Chinese variant, which I will just showcase here. Obviously, not the LA-9, that would be my next Chinese spade. There's the 44 for the, or the Chinese, and, well, if you look at the repair cost, you'll notice the Chinese one is actually more expensive, but not by a whole lot. So, what is the difference between the 44 and the regular TU-2S? So, the only real difference is this back turret. It's a bit more streamlined. It's got, well, it's, I mean, it is a bit more streamlined, but at the same time, there's also a bit of an opening for the actual crewman to get shot in the face, as you can tell, because he's only got his 50 cal to protect him. There is a bit of armor plating, but let's be real, if your gunner is getting shot at, he's probably going to be dead anyway, because, well, at this BR, you tend to see aircraft equipped with either a lot of cannons or high caliber machine guns, which will punch straight through this armor either way. Same goes for this back turret. This back turret is, well, it's awesome, but at the same time, it's also a area where the gunner can get shot in the face. That's not exactly pleasant. Now, there is an area just just near the tip of the tail where all three 50 cals can point to a target. It's unlikely you're going to get this in terms of the capability of the aircraft and obviously shooting at an enemy aircraft defensively. But if you do, this, this bomb actually packs quite a big punch. That's for definite. Now, the main cause of death that I had with this aircraft was fuel tank fires. And you can sometimes put them out, however that also leads you to losing a landing gear on that side. And unlike most aircraft, you can't actually land this thing belly landing it, shall we say, without the tail snapping off. So that means you're going to have to be extremely careful about fires, which... Not many people seem to take note of with TU-2S's, so it's best to aim for the wings of a TU-2S, so even if you don't get the kill straight away, it ain't going back to base with a pleasant landing, let's just say. So in terms of gunners, obviously we have three on board, and obviously you do have some front guns, which I'll go over shortly. The rear turret has, well the rear turrets in general have really good coverage, the lower gun has 350 rounds, the upper gun has 250, and this upper turret here has 190. They won't last long, but if you can get shots on target, since I fought, m fought mostly against Japanese aircraft and sometimes allied, they tend to have very vulnerable engines, such as radial engines, and they're very easy to take out with precision shooting. Now the 44 obviously doesn't change in terms of bomb load of the original TU-2S. You get two 250 stock, and you also get the two, two, or the two 500s. Then obviously the only bomb load you need to unlock is the PV or PKD2, and then you can unlock everything else. Personally, the most versatile and the most useful one that I found was the 4500, it's very similar to the old TU2S. So front guns, obviously you can tell, offensive 20 mils. You do get two 20 mils in the front, they are actually pretty handy. Again, Shavax may be whack, but at least if you put armored targets in, you can actually pop a light tank or a pillbox quite decently with this capability. Even the 12.7 turrets are quite useful for that. But yeah, this thing's actually not that bad. I I thought it was going to be a struggle at 6 though. that's why I never flew it. But obviously I've been playing it at 5.7, and they're both really fun. I've got to admit that. But obviously, as I mentioned, I'm currently working on the 59 model, so once I've done with that, there'll obviously be a review on that. So, in terms of games in the Russian one, 9 deaths, 10 kills, 233 ground targets, and 1 ship, which I think was a... What would it have been? It would have been a landing craft, probably, or a 
Yeah, it would have been a landing craft because I dropped a 500 on it. And then the Chinese one, I think I had actually worse. Yeah, because, well, Chinese. whenever you jump in a Chinese aircraft of a Russian aircraft, it would seem, you just tend to have worse teams. Eight deaths, seven kills, 146. Most of those were from the, you know, the, the big tank convoy on Calc and Gold, where you can just rush in like a twat and just get bombing off. That's pretty much what I did, and it's actually surprisingly effective in doing that. But in terms of the battle that I'm going to show you today, uh, it's not on that map, and it's actually on a map that I don't tend to really play bombers on, or attackers. Poland. Now, I'll squad it up here with Forsaken Shadow, one of my subs, and most importantly, a, a, a nice little squad mate I have. And, well, I think he was in his Russian B-25 in this battle if I remember rightly, and we soon realised that this battle could have been a potential problem, shall we say. So if you look down there, you can tell it's pretty much just copy and paste Poland map with a bit of expansion. And to be honest, it's just one of those maps that it either works for a grand attacker or it doesn't, and there's Shadow and his B-25. Now, I was nearing the end of the spade for this thing. I think I had like four, five mods left at the time. So, you're basically getting fully spaded performance here. And the 44 is certainly worthy of your time. Now it's at 5.7. The 59 is definitely worth your time. That thing's a lot of fun with that 20 mil on the back. Spoiler alert. But obviously, I didn't want to leave these bombers to just gather dust and not actually use them and spade them and review them and everything because I like the TU-2S, I like the original one. I want to get my hands on that one at 4.0 which is a very rare aircraft and personally I don't think I'll get it ever but you never know and even at 5.7 these aircraft are very very good. So as you can tell we're currently in a 6.3 game and this, well sorry no, 6, 6.0 sorry and as you can tell this team is... They're not going to do that great. The Grand Attackers are going to do well. The Fighters are going to do okay. But... Even so. So the plan here was, with Shadow, I was going to dive in, drop my bombs, and just get the bloody hell out. Because, well, that's what happens on this map. You have to get in and out as soon as possible. And there you can see an AU-1. And I said to Shadow, look, pitch your nose up. Go back up, get some altitude. We do not want to get shredded by that thing. As as dangerous as an AU-1 is at low altitude, it's still a brick. So if we can force him to play to our game, we can at least force the sod down. But an IL-10, and not the crap one, I think it is. No, it is the crap one. It's a 46, but he still shreds him with his 23s, which is always nice. So obviously the, you may know, have noticed in the dive-in, there's two bombs under the wing roots. They drop se separately, same as the bomb bay. That's, that's one thing I like about the TU-2S's. That's a replay bug before anyone asks. Don't ask me, because, well, Gaijin. So obviously me and Shadow, we're trying to get in and out. We're dropping our bombs as quickly as we can. The reason why Shadow's in the B-25 is because he does not have any 5.7 Russian aircraft at this time, or Chinese aircraft. So four bombs, four targets, pretty accurate dropping by me. Shadow obviously got, I think he got, did he get one or two? Uh, he didn't get any unfortunately, but it's at this point Shadow's about to get intercepted by that A26. And this is where the front guns actually come in handy. Once again, Shavak still be whack, and my aim was a bit crap, I will admit. And that probably cost Shadow a, well, it'd have been dead anyway, but... My aiming wasn't exactly helpful for him. He says he scores a crit on the A26, which he did. And while Shadow goes down, the A26 pulls it vertical. I'm pouring on a long burst here. And I'm able to put the aircraft down. And that's when my front guns actually ran out of ammunition. I spent all my ammo on that son of a bitch. Just shows how tough those things are, eh? So that's my first kill for the game, obviously with the front guns, and the rest of them are not going to be with the front guns, just to point out they're with the tail. And those of you that spotted it as I stalled there, you saw a tiger cat. 
Now, there are still some ground attackers left alive, but he's that much of a freaking idiot, he's decided to go and tail set. Now, don't get me wrong, the tiger cat's got some good guns behind it, don't get me wrong, but it's when you tail set a TU-2S where two thirds of its defensive armament can fuck you up. And I'm aiming for your engine blocks. And there he goes. He did some minor damage. And that was really it. He didn't exactly get anything out of that. Ah oh, well. Free kill for me. That's my second kill for the game. So at this point, obviously, I want to get back to my base. I want to get some more bombs in the plane. And we can at least decide what to do. Now on the enemy team, there is actually a guy named... Um, Necron 14 and last game me and Shadow saw him and he was calling someone a hacker because he shot him down in an LA-9. He thinks his Spitfire is some sort of god. Not against an LA-9 at 23,000 feet is all I'll say. As good as the Griffin Spits are, they're not that good. I was just showing Shadow there by bombs because he's never actually seen the inside of a bomb over TU2. So, I was showing him the bombs there, and he, he, he quite likes the aircraft. He, he says he's going to give it a go, hopefully, so... You never know. You might see Shadow sending in a sub replay or something. Well, then again, consoles can't do that, I don't think. Uh, as member was saying, shout out to you, pal. Um, do me a favour, do you know, do you actually know if you can send sub replays? For a console? Because I, I don't think you can, if I remember rightly. I don't think you can. So at this point, a, I think it was a Yak or an I-225 just got shot down by that Spitfire, which is a Necron. And I said to Shadow, I'm going to see what he's up to. Let's, let's see if he's dumb enough to come and chase me, which I want him to chase me because, well, he's going to eat 50 cows and this thing's quite tough. I would actually say a Talisman on a TU-2S would actually do you some well. The one you'd want to go with, though, is the 5.3 one. I know normally I would have said the 59, but the point is, is that the lower the BR, the less chance you have of meeting a jet. And you do meet jets in this aircraft. Not very often, but when you do, it's not going to end well for you, is all I will say. With the 44 and the 59, you have to fight jets, and... For jets-wise, you will fight the 162, the Arado, which has no guns, um, the 262 with a 50 mil, and the Kika. The Kika is probably the most annoying son of a bitch I've ever met in a com well, in a freaking prop aircraft. Is all I'll say. Let me tell you, it's an absolute bloody nightmare. So I'm trying to get Lacron or Necron to actually tail sit me. That's what I want him to do. But unfortunately, my LA-9 teammate has the aiming capacity of a blind dog, so he decides I'm going to take a head-on with this Spitfire and not even hit him once while he creates my engine. So I dropped my two, well, two of my bombs there, and obviously I'm trying to get the Kron to tail sit me, which, surprisingly enough, is actually going to work. He does do some damage and wound one of my gunners, but do I care? Not really, because well, the TU-2S is one tough son of a gun. Now against German cannons it will struggle, and against jets it will struggle, trust me. You don't want to fight a Kika in this thing. Or a P-59. Those things are even more dangerous in my personal opinion. But the 44s were, were fun to fly, obviously, because the Chinese had the 44 model, I was like, ooh, sweet, I can get that spaded as well. And, yeah, it's, it's been a lot of fun, I really do have to admit that. So I've already crit that Spitfire, and he's already limping, shall we say, in terms of his engine power at the moment. He's limping quite hard, because, well, it's a Griffin engine, and it's just took a barrier into the engine block. It's going to feel it. And at that point, his engine has pretty much completely failed, but just out insult or injury, I've set the poor son of a bitch on fire. And... There he goes for my third and final kill. We do end up winning, and I end up being the last guy on the team, because the, I think the people before I crashed, if I remember rightly. But yeah, these aircraft are very capable in the right hands. The, the gunners on this thing are pretty brutal, to say they're only caliber 50s compared to some of the cannon-armed aircraft. 
But if you don't fancy your chances with three 50 cals, same with a TU2S. Don't worry, the 59 will have you covered. But anyway, I'm going to let guys off. I hope you enjoyed today's review on the TU2S44. Obviously, this does include the Chinese one. And I'll see you all on the next one.